Uh, so, just to uh, uh, talk a little bit about more of one tool that has been developed uh, mostly by geographers uh, throughout the last maybe 20 years or so uh, are so-called geographical information systems or GIS for those acronym freaks among us and uh, uh, geographical information systems are in essence uh, tools to display spatial data so in other words you have popular in the most trivial sense population data so you know exactly where they are so you display them we all have seen those the maps with the dark red with the people you know standing on top of each other or something like that or white areas where you know, there's nobody that's one uh, so you can have a map like that so themed maps if you will right that's what that's what these things are uh, then you can have uh, the same area or the same region but a map uh, based on let's say uh, substrata so is it uh, clay is it uh, what uh, just just uh, granite rock or is it uh, sand or is it what not you know uh, and some of those strata are very useful for the location of landfills others are not so good you can presumably use all of them but it will be very costly if you don't have the appropriate you know uh, uh, strata there so anyway you can have maps and you color all those areas uh, that have uh, uh, subsurface strata that you don't really want to use you color them in I don't know whatever color and leave the one that you can use blank then you can take that map and overlay them with the previous one and then all of a sudden you have uh, I don't know in, in red maybe all of those areas that you can't use for reasons of population because you're too close to them uh, then you have in blue maybe all uh, regions that you cannot use because the uh, uh, the soil isn't right and then you cannot have uh, in, in yellow or whatnot uh, areas because they're too close to an airport or whatnot. There are many, many, many reasons. Or too steep, you know. You don't want to want to have a landfill at an angle, you know. I mean, it's a ski hill. It's just, you know, it's not a landfill. It doesn't work like that. Anyway, and uh, so you put all this in different colors. It's just like overheads, one on top of another, on top of another. And when you look through all of them, then they're probably just very tiny, tiny little white areas. Those are the ones that are not restricted by any of those reasons that you have uh, considered, right? And that is where you can start your search. That's where you still can locate. And that, I think, is a great tool rather than, uh, you know, trying to look up something in different sources that are not connected, that, are, that do not represent uh, things graphically the way they should and so forth. So uh, that makes it really easy. And probably most importantly, it, uh, it gives an it provides an image to the decision maker. The decision maker can say, oh, this is a map. I know that because I'm living here. So, oh, this is where we could go. Oh, this is where we could go, right? So whenever you have graphs or networks or something like that, they are very highly visually oriented. Most of us are visually oriented, right? Uh, as I read, I have no idea how they measure that, but uh, that uh, from all of the things we perceive, about 80% are visual, okay? So whether that number is right or not, I don't care, uh, but it's a lot, and that's good enough for me, right? And so if you have a tool that actually uses that, very good. Uh, it goes along with something I, I worked on a little while ago, which was uh, decision analysis and a specific tool. And I didn't invent anything great, but uh, it was a uh, visualization of what happens if uh, some parameters change in the decision analysis context. You can actually see that on paper, saying, wait a minute, oh, this could happen, and then our decision space changes like this or that. So it, it just allows you to visualize it, and that, I think, will, uh, will increase the acceptance, because there's nothing worse than uh, telling a decision maker that, uh, uh, you know, that his changes or the changes that he proposes will change the hyperplanes and uh, reduce in a different uh, polyhedron because he'll have no clue of what the heck you're talking about.
right? So if, on the other hand, I can sort of in two dimensions, or maybe in three, can't plot in any more than that, uh, you know, if I can't put together a picture that shows sort of something that I want to say, then uh, it is much more likely that uh, these results will actually uh, be utilized at one point in time. And I remember now, these, are, these figures are really, really old, but um, that um, uh, among all operations research studies, it's not just landfills, not just locations, it's much wider than that, among all of those studies that were commissioned by somebody, which means you already uh, convinced somebody to put up money, manpower, and whatnot, right, to do something that out of all, that among all of those, only one in five was actually ever applied. That's terrible. Okay, there are many reasons for that. Uh, some of these things were ill-conceived. Some of those things were just not communicated very well and whatnot. But any visualization can only help. That's really the whole the whole point. And uh, that. Uh, that tool, that uh, geographical information system, makes things much more vis uh, much more visible. Really, makes results visible. I mean, like contour lines, uh, things like that. You know, uh, and that really will help to convince not only the decision makers, them in the first place, but also the general public, because they will have to accept it. If they don't, they will uh, kick the. Uh, uh, city council or the uh, municipal council or whoever out of office and then we're back to square one, you know. So people have to be convinced and I think uh, visual tools are a fantastic uh, way to actually achieve that.